Hi, Jayshree. Okay, so how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, me too. And how is the cold there? Like, is it cold or normal? Ah, uh, it is. It is very cold. It is like I don't know minus fifteen to minus nineteen degree outside, but inside it is not that bad because we have central heating throughout. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So did we meet uh, like? Previously in Pulso campus, no, I think we didn't meet in no, person. I, no, I don't think so. No. So you are you were at which batch? Like um, uh, before Bhavo, uh, before before Spandan and group. You. No, no, I was in the batch of uh, Spandan. Yeah. Okay, so you are in electronics. I, electronics. Yeah, yes, yes, I'm electronics oh. and communication. Okay, that's why engineer. I didn't meet you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so. Uh, actually, uh, some of my viewers and my students, okay, they were like asking, um, what after B, like after bachelor, what should be opt? And many of them, they wanted to know about what is the process for going abroad, like out of Nepal for mas masters, what are the scope? Okay, so there, there were some questions asked by them. So I thought, uh, let's uh, take a person, someone from my own college, my own institute, and I feel very proud that my student, uh, like not, I didn't teach you, but of course you are my student, so who is who has gone out? So I thought, let's start from you. So I think uh, you are our first, uh, you know, first one to share your views, okay? So thank you very much for accepting this. And- uh, um, thank, you. thank you for having me and thank you for doing this because uh, it is very helpful to a lot of, yeah. uh, I guess, students because application process I know can be very, difficult because there are many students who still don't know what is the process like uh, what uh, do we get a scholarship what is the process how should we approach and you know many things are there so i thought why not in real scenario you'd ask some of uh, some people like you to share their experience so there are some questions that i have collected from my students only because of course they are going to see this and uh, so shall we start yeah yeah sure are ready yes. yeah so thank you very much again for joining. Uh, mm -hmm. So first, uh, first is like, uh, of course, I know who are you and from where. Still, my viewers they want to know. So, uh, what is your name, qualification, and then uh, which college you studied and year of pass out, like before joining masters. So please uh, take your time. So I will uh, give a brief introduction of myself. I am Jay Shridati. I completed my bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering BEX uh, from Pulcho campus. I graduated in 2019. I think that is 2076 because I was 2072 batch. And then later I worked as a software engineer in engineering, software engineer in LIS Nepal Private Limited for one and a half years. And then I came here in Finland to pursue my master's in uh, security and cloud computing at Aldo University. I'm doing a double degree and it was a, a fully funded scholarship that I got from Erasmus Mandus. Uh, that is a funded scholarship from European Union. And I will be doing my first year here at, at Aldo University and uh, second year we do it in a different university. So uh, right now I have five different options that is Sweden, Norway, France, uh, Estonia and Denmark and I would prefer to go to Sweden but we still do not know which university we will go next next September so probably we'll know it by February and um, yeah I think that is pretty much it. Okay so that was a brief introduction about you and uh, like which college you're studying which university you're studying and then uh, can you please explain like what is the process like uh, I heard that you went uh, like from this Erasmus scholarship and all. So yeah, what is the process? How can our students apply in that? Uh, so actually uh, the process for Erasmus Mund scholarship uh, that I applied to Seclo, it's pretty much very straightforward and easy. And uh, in my case, I got very lucky because I only applied to one graduate program and I got selected with full scholarship and then I came. So I didn't have to go through that entire process of application, applying to different places. Obviously I was planning to next year, but uh, in the first year, I just like took a chance, maybe like let's try because I saw the program and it sounded like, very fascinating. So, uh, but in general, if I have to say the application process, it's actually a bit 
I don't know, it, dem it demands a lot of work because there are a lot of examination that you have to take. Uh, that is one of the exams, GRE, graduate record examination, and then you have to take English proficiency tests like maybe IELTS or TOEFL, uh, depending on where you want to go. So if you want to go maybe to US, then yeah, the, pro the preferable exam is TOEFL. But if you want to go to maybe like broaden your perspective, like maybe go to Europe or Canada and Australia, then uh, probably IELTS is the better option to take rather than uh, TOEFL, but it's just uh, about you and both of them are English proficiency test and acceptable. And also there is an option of not taking the English proficiency test and you can, I think, make, an, make a letter from campus, uh, from the administration. I didn't do it, but I know my couple of friends, a couple of friends of mine did. And you can make a letter that your bachelor was in English language so that you don't have to like prove that you are proficient in English language. And then um, after that, uh, applying to like Erasmus Mundus, if I have to say then for Erasmus Mundus, you have to also give your address proof of residence that you are a resident of Nepal because what happens in Erasmus Mundus is that they have dedicated certain amount of scholarship to every country. So for in Nepal, uh, they will probably like every program, if there are applicants from Nepal, they will prefer Nepali people, like maybe two Nepalese uh, students over other country students because they want a culturally diverse group of students like uh, Erasmus Mundus is all about like diverse culture and diverse background so that's why like it is also an advantage I would say so they want to like make sure that you are, have lived like the past year in uh, Nepal so you have to make a proof of residence which you can make from your municipality and then uh, there is like a process there is a uh, letter of recommendation that is you have to get maybe at least two academic recommendation and maybe also work recommendation uh, depending on your personal background uh, about you can take it from your college professor but it is generally recommended to take the most recent uh, letter of recommendation but I think also for Erasmus Mondes they prefer academic recommendation more at least to the program that I applied and uh, then you have to also write a motivational letter which is actually the most critical and sensitive uh, part i know that like it's a it's kind of confusing because we don't have that many like examples of how and what to write motivational letter and we weren't even have had any kind of workshop on how to write motivation letter but it it requires and you have to like give briefly about why you are motivated and why do you particularly want to like participate in this program so it's all about your motivation how dedicated and how like uh, passionate you are about applying the, to this program and studying here and then there is your cv that you have to like write uh in your erasmus founders your cv should is preferable if it is in europass format it is a very like simple template you can find anywhere in the internet and then um Yes, I think that is pretty much it. And also, if you have some work experience and volunteer experience, leadership experience, then everything can be included in your CV. And also, you can add additional certificates like work certificate. In my case, I worked for one and a half years. So I added my work experience letter also. And yes, that is pretty much it. So these are all the applications that you have to, um, the, these are all the documents that you have to make ready. And one good thing about Erasmus Mondas is that you don't have to pay any application fee. So you have to send your TOEFL score, which does cost some amount of money. But other than that, for example, if you want to apply university specific, then every university have their own application fee that you have to pay. And that fee is quite high. It's like somewhere around 85 to $100, which is very high which is a lot of money in Nepal. And, but in Erasmus Mondes, you don't have to uh, pay any application fee. Okay, thank you, Jayashree. I think that was very detailed information and I hope my viewers, they will, of course, uh, they'll know everything, each and every details you explain. Okay, so that was very nice of you. Now, uh, I, I hope you have searched for many, uh, like in search of master's degree and all. So I hope you searched for many university before yeah. opting for Erasmus. So uh, do you know, and like different options to apply for targeting for research and academia, like any scholarship scheme other than this, like if you have searched for any before applying to this. So do you have any, just, just a small introduction, like, yeah, this, 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 this scholarships are there. You can opt for that. If you have any information, only if you have any information regarding other than Erasmus. 
Uh, yes, so uh, in case of Europe, if I have to start, then yes, uh, there is definitely Erasmus Mundus, and it is like different. So there are like different courses under Erasmus Mundus. For example, there is one secular one, and then there is also BDMA, which is Big Data Management and Analytics, and then there is also EDIS, which is for Data Science. So there are different courses, and you can apply individually to every course, but only one student can only apply to a maximum of three courses a year. And then uh, there is also some courses like Genial and everything, which you can and search in the internet if you go to the Erasmus Mundus page. And then there is that scholarship, which is uh, for Germany, but I think they do have like some kind of um, some kind of requirement for work. I don't know exactly, but uh, that could be easily like search over in internet. So there is that scholarship for Germany. And then there is Chevening scholarship for UK. But I think there is one requirement with the scholarship that you have to like, after completing your master's, you have to come back to home country or something like that. I'm not so sure because I didn't apply, but there is a, uh, this scholarship that exists. And then there is a scholarship of Swedish Institute, uh, so it's like in Sweden, where you apply individually to universities, but there is also a Swedish government scholarship that you can like apply. So if you are selected to the university that you are applying to, then the government will provide you scholarship and stipend, and it's actually a very good and very prestigious uh, scholarship. And then there is EIT Digital which is also same, I think similar to Erasmus, it is like a double degree program, but it is called EIT Digital. And I don't know in detail, but I know that it exists and it can be searched over. Uh, so these are the scholarships I think are in Europe. And then also you can like separately apply to all the universities and then contact the professors and then also ask for maybe a like research assistantship, teaching assistantship. So the thing is that here, um, the, um, the work wage of is very high so if you are like if you come if you get a scholarship and if you can't uh, support your living expenses yourself or if you want to like work then you can find work very easily and then you can also get ta and ra positions which is like inside the university you work under some professor and then you will have to like uh, teach in the exercise so we have different assignments for every uh, every course and then you can work as a TA and help students with the assignments and you can teach classes and that kind of work you can easily apply for like for example if you're a master's student then you can apply for teaching assistant to bachelor level courses and the course that you have uh, knowledge on that pays pretty well so that is also an option and then uh, I don't know very uh, detailly about Canada, but I think also there are, uh, there is like numerous uh, opportunities where you can directly apply to university and then uh, talk to professor, like email professors. And then if you have similar interests, research interests, then you can uh, ask for research assistantship or teaching assistantship. And I think that is the same in US. And also if you are more into industries, then I would recommend applying for a master's so that you can be get a specialization degree in the field that you want to, and then you can work in the industry. Whereas if you are more into academia and if you're more like into research field then I would apply I would recommend applying to PhD and I think there are pretty much very good opportunities for applying to PhD in the US uh, you can get like research assistantship teaching assistantship and you can also apply to integrated masters and PhD scholarships I know that a lot of uh, my friends and my colleagues uh, from Nepal also went uh, to US different universities all over the US uh, for, for their PhD uh, position and some of them also got uh, scholarship in masters for a teaching assistantship and research assistantship it totally depends on how you apply and the requirements are pretty much what I said uh, before and uh, then there is also like a uh, scholarship maybe outside like for example there is also a scholarship for uh, Thailand and there is a scholarship for Abu Dhabi like for Khalifa University and then there is something in Thailand but I don't exactly remember the name of the scholarship it is a very popular scholarship and then there is also scholarship in China there's scholarship in Singa Singapore which is called a Singa scholarship uh, which is also a very prestigious scholarship and Singapore is a great place and um, yeah, I think that is uh, that is pretty much it. The scholarships that I know, but actually, uh, if you just uh, like that is what I would like recommend uh, to your viewers that if you just go over and search uh, in the internet like one hour or two hour, there are numerous scholarships that are available. You just have to look for it and apply. There are actually a lot of great opportunities out there. Okay, so I think uh, you already answered answered next question. So the next question was like, what is the living cost and is it economically feasible for Nepali student 
and can we do an IT job? So I think you answered most of the part of this question. So is it really feasible for Nepali student to sustain their like, uh, or uh, like, uh, like despite of studying, like can we enroll in IT jobs and all, or we have to do that teaching assist assistant job only, or can we enroll in IT type jobs or all? So these are some of the questions. I think uh, I think you can, but I think it uh, job actually like depends on country and country's visa requirements. So I don't uh, I can't say about other countries because I don't know that very well. But if I have to speak for Finland, the country that I am in currently, I think you can actually like apply for a full time job and work because they do have a work limit of twenty five hours a week. But that is like if you work in something like different. But if you work in your own field of study, like for example, if you are studying computer science and if you're if you want to work in the field of computer science you can work like full-time and also study and uh, the studies here are not that like uh, they have made the study pattern very much like convenient for students so it is very convenient to work and also study and uh, yes i think there are there are tara positions and you can also apply for full-time position and work and also like if i have to say about finland that even if you don't work at the living i mean finland is actually expensive country because it is in the Nordic Nordic region, but there are amazing student benefits. So if you are a student, you have like benefit in every single thing from accommodation to eating uh, to like every single place that you go. If you just ask, do you have a student discount? Every single place, like most of the place, not every single does have student discount. So it is not actually that uh, that much like uh, expensive but also yeah it is expensive and uh, if, if we are coming from nepal compared to there and here currency it gets very expensive but there are a lot of opportunities to apply and they pay you very well so uh, it is it is completely doable i would say so right now are you uh, are you enrolling in any type of job like ta or any job like talking about yourself uh, no, actually, I am not uh, because I get a full uh, stipend uh, from uh, Erasmus, but uh, I am also taking more credits than I can uh, for the autumn semester to get more things done so that my spring semester is free. But in my course, it is a mandatory requirement to do internship. So probably I will start my internship sometime around March. Hopefully I'm applying right now. So uh, yes, not currently, but hopefully soon in the future. So uh, now I think this is the question that most of my viewers want to know. So what are your future plans? Do you want to come back to Nepal or you want to stay there? And why you chose abroad? Like why not master's in Nepal? Because even we have master's degree. So why you, you went to abroad and what's your future plan? Are you planning to come back? So uh, why must I would like to start with my why masters abroad? Obviously, there are a lot of masters degree programs in Nepal, uh, but the thing is that based on my bachelor's study experience in Nepal, the study and the curriculum there is very primitive. I would say. I mean, that was my experience in bachelor's. Maybe that is different in masters. I don't know, but in mas in bachelor it was very theoretical, like and also it was like very primitive like we were studying something maybe that was developed 10 15 maybe 20 years ago i don't know actually but here what happens is that the course curriculum is updated every two to three years so the courses that i'm taking and it is actually very practical because we have to do a lot of different projects like real life projects and then we have to we do a lot of assignments and they are like the very recent and very new technologies that uh, you know that i don't have to like separately self-study to find a job somewhere in the market. I can also take the course and that will make me skilled enough to like also hone my skills in that particular area. And also I will learn a lot of things. I don't say that when, when I studied, I didn't learn. I learned a lot, but they are like something, I don't know, like very old. And uh, like, if you want to like uh, work with what is there in the market right now, you want to learn something what is like what they are requiring right now, not what they require a long time back so that is one of the reasons that i chose masters abroad because i want to work uh, and maybe like explore and learn more about what is there currently what are the cutting edge technologies right now and uh, this uh, program gave me pretty much it because 
the courses here that I'm taking right now that is pretty much very amazing and uh, very uh, very practical and very much uh, interesting, I would say. And also another thing, like if I want to come back to Nepal, definitely like sometime in the future, because uh, I'm studying here and probably I would want to work uh, somewhere where I get to like work in the more like recent uh, projects and something like uh, maybe as I said, again, cutting edge technologies. But uh, obviously, some uh, at some point, I would want to come back to Nepal, to my country, and then stay with my family and also work for something in the Nepal. Right now, currently, I'm just starting out in my career, so I'm not in that very much entrepreneur, entrepreneur entrepreneurial mindset i would say but uh, definitely sometime in the future i would want to come back and do something and start something on my own uh, what that is that is the very big question right now so i'm not very clear what i would want to do so probably that is the process of me trying to figure out here working what is that i can do come back and do and uh, so yes but definitely sometime uh, soon Thank you for the honest answer. So I think this was pretty honest that you talked about the theoretical aspect. Even I completed my master's in Bangalore. So even I opted to go out and do my master's. So they are like uh, very practical. Like if you'll go out of Nepal, you'll see that they are, the knowledge is very practical, not theoretical. Because even I learned so many things there. So you're most welcome. We hope that you'll come back to our country or your country. And I'll yeah, see you in your suit. I miss Nepal a lot, a lot. There is actually no place like Nepal. Honestly, What's the momos? Yeah, mostly momos, food, places, mountains, everything yes, a lot. Everything. Because of course, this is your home place, so you are going to miss this. And we hope you'll complete your career, your education, and you'll come back. And even our country will get benefited from you. And hope we'll meet soon. So, last question I think is uh, what is your suggestions for your students, for your friends, for our viewers? So, last suggestion, anything like you want to suggest them? Those who are trying for masters, or those who are in first year, second year, those who are in bachelor's, like everyone, like what are your suggestions for them? Especially to the bachelor's student, because they are, you know, they are very confused about the future, like what to do next. So, any suggestion you can give them? Uh, well, I would suggest to work hard, like work very, very hard. So there is no shortcut, maybe sometime, but most of the time it's always hard work. So work hard, learn what you are, uh, try to build a portfolio right from where you are now, because uh, when you are applying, it's the smallest things that you did, like entirely throughout your bachelor's, it counts. It's not something like, it's not one GRE score that will get you to one university. It's like entire, entire bachelor journey that you will have to represent through your CV and motivational letter uh, if you would ever want to pursue your master's abroad but even if you don't I would like even if you like want to just stay in Nepal and do something in Nepal I would still want uh, still cut, like maybe suggest you to do a master somewhere outside or maybe pursue or maybe like explore outside because it gives a lot of perspective it I mean I was a completely different uh, perspective person and had had a different mindset four months back when I was in Nepal but coming here in four months I wouldn't say that I'm completely changed but it gave me a lot of perspective because I meet new people and it's not just like uh, technology technology that I'm learning I'm learning more about uh, culture uh, society food and geography history every single day with uh, all of my friends here and that is actually a very very good learning that you can carry out throughout your life so I would definitely recommend maybe like uh, try masters abroad and then if you want you can always go back to your country and do something start off where you left and there is always that option so it's not that it will vanish and also like work very very hard and also don't stress much just go for it and uh, good things will uh, eventually happen okay so i think that was the questions list that i got from the students so i think many more questions are yet to come so thank you very much for your time for your precious time and all the best for your futures. We hope to see you where you want to go. And in future, like we'll be sharing your details. Like if you try for internship, you get internships. So again, we'll be doing a you know, session with you because uh, uh, I think this is the best session. You spoke so honestly and very clearly. Thank you very much, Jessri, for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me.
I hope it helps someone. Yeah, of course it is going to help many students. So your video will be coming soon and I'll see you this with you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.